Hello my little butterflies, and this video is going to be about my most exciting new releases in 2018. So I could have just called this my most anticipated releases, but I wanted, I, I was trying to be different to be honest. So it's going to be my most exciting releases because there are a lot of like new releases that I want to read, but not all of them are what I'm most excited for. But these are like the ones that I really, really, really want to read by the end of the year. I might not read it when they first come out, but they definitely like on my list of things. I'm like, I need to read those. And I think I have 16 of those. Now, I think I may have added like three or four of them from watching other people's videos. And I was like, oh, yeah, that, that sounds good. I need to add it to my list. So I might have stole like three or four of them from other people. But a lot of these were already I have been looking at. I had found out about last year, like going throughout the year. And I was like, oh, they're coming out with a new book. I got to read that. So they're not in order from they're not in order at all from my most in, my most excited new release or from they're not in order from the day they come out either i was just too lazy to do that. i could have done that but i didn't the first book that i have on my list that i'm going to tell you guys about is the last to let go by amber smith who she also wrote the way i used to be and i think i did a video review but i'm not sure but i know i did like a goodreads review and i'm gonna link that but I can't wait to read this. It's not a, a second book to that. It's just, you know, it's different, okay? And so it's not in a series with the way I used to be. In case y'all are wondering, it is like a, a standalone book by itself. It's separate from that. And it comes out February 6th. So it's about this girl, Brooke. It's her junior year in high school. And she feels like she's going to start fresh. You know, it's a new town, new people. And she's going to be able to leave all of her past behind her. And then all of that changes when her mother kills her abusive father and it's like nobody knows what's going on nobody knows what happened like nobody knows if it was self-defense or if she just you know decided like i'm tired of it and i'm not gonna deal with it today and so now it's her and her siblings they're all they're on their own and it's like what should have started out as being like fresh for her and like new isn't fresh and it isn't new anymore so now it's like she they have to deal with all the the, their demons in their family, all these dysfunctionalists, they have to deal with it now. So, I can't wait to read that because I really, really love um, The Way I Used to Be by her. I think, I want to say this is a, her second novel, but I'm not sure if The Way I Used to Be was her first. But, um, I'm just going to believe that this is her second one. And I'm excited about that. It comes out February 6th. Then, you guys, um, my next book is A Reap in the Gates by Saba Tahir, which is the third book to The Ember and Ashes. And I'm fucking excited about that. I just, I cannot wait to read that. Like, I, y'all know I love An Ember and Ashes. Like, that's one of my top uh, series, my top books that I love. And I'm just, I'm kind of shook from the end of um, A Torch Against the Night. So, I can't wait to continue with this. I've been pretty good with this series, you know. I haven't really, you know, fell too far behind. I haven't read them, like, exactly when the book come out. But I haven't been too far, like, after that. Maybe, like, a couple months after that. So, I'm excited to read this one. But I saw the cover, and I, not, I don't really like the cover of this one. Like, it doesn't match with an ember in the ashes. And it doesn't match with the torch against the night. The cover is just, I don't, I don't like it. Like, I want a cover with... Like, you know, like the other two covers. Like, they could make it like that and just make it green or something. I don't know. I just, I don't, I don't like this cover. I, I, I'm not a fan of it, but I really want to read the book. So, I guess I can't complain too much. Oh, and that comes out, that comes out May 22nd. And the third book I have on my list, I talked about this last month. I was supposed to read this for my December TBR, but I didn't read a lot of stuff for my December TBR. But we're going to leave that alone because that was last year. And we're going to leave last year in the past. So, the book I'm talking about is Surprise Me by Sophie Kinsella. And this book comes out February 13th. And it's a chip lit novel. It's not YA. It's adult. But, y'all know, if anybody, if you've been on BookTube for any amount of time, everybody talks about Sophie Kinsella. Sophie Kinsella is amazing. So, I, I just, this is my second book reading by her. The first book I read by her was um a book that came out last year my not so perfect life i haven't read the shopaholic series yet even though i want to but this one comes out are you okay <laughs> this one comes out february 13th and it's about this perfect married couple that i guess at some point they find out that they are in perfect hell and like somebody probably telling you you have at least you know 60 years left together you know y'all gonna live out y'all days together because y'all perfect 
and they start to feel worried because they were the perfect couple that you know would finish each other's sentences and everything was just like picture perfect and now they start to worry because they wonder is our picture perfect marriage is it boring and then they start this project called project surprise me where they decide that they're going to surprise each other i don't know if it's every day or like every month but they're going to surprise they're going to make it a point to, to surprise each other and then I, I guess of course it's not going to go as planned you know they're going to hit road bumps and um uh, secrets are going to come out and then they're going to start looking at each other different like are we should we really be together we have all of these secrets so it's kind of like are there secrets that they're hiding from each other going to tear them apart or bring them closer together and personally i think that's going to bring them closer together because i mean nobody wants to feel like we're just perfect you know nobody wants to feel that because then then you feel like there's no room for you to grow as a couple it's like, I don't think any couple is perfect. Everybody always has room to grow. So I feel like that's going to bring them closer together. But I don't know. This is Sophie Kinsella. And she's like, she's a really real person. Like, she, she doesn't just wrap everything up with a bow all the time. Um, at least that's what I saw from her last, her last book. It's like really kind of realistic. Like, this is what could happen, you know. So we'll see. But I think it'll bring them closer together. And then the next book I'm going to talk about. I saw this book on Edelweiss. I did request it. Um, the last time I went on Edelweiss, I hadn't, you know, got approved for it, so I don't think I'm going to get approved for it, because this book comes out March um, 20th, and is adult contemporary, and it is called Every Note Played by Lisa Gen Genova, and it just sounds amazing, it's about this guy, he, um, I can't remember his name, but like he's like he's really good at playing the piano. Like that was his life and his everything. And then all of a sudden he gets ALS and he's like completely paralyzed, I think, in his right in his right arm. So he can't play anymore. And it's about his struggle. And it's about him and his wife's struggle. Well, let me let me back this up. They end up his he ended up getting paralyzed, so his life starts to go downhill from there. He gets divorced because he I they end up, him and his wife end up going through a divorce, and his wife ends up, you know, just like, he, she can't look at the past of what could have been, and she feels like her husband ruined their life, and then all of a sudden, he gets bad off to where he can't live by himself, and she has to be his caretaker, and it's about them, you know, as he's getting worse, they're trying to salvage their relationship and kind of fix whatever they can before it's too late in you know he ends up leaving this world and you're not on a good page i just think this sounds really emotional i feel like i'm gonna cry at some point reading this or i'm sorry i don't cry at reading books i feel like i'm gonna just tear up and um yeah i'm excited for this i haven't seen anybody mention this and you know and their most anticipated reads but we'll see i think i think this is, sounds like a really good book i want to see how many people are gonna like bring this up this year because it sounds pretty good and then the next book I have on my list is Poet X by Elizabeth As 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 I don't know. I don't know. As I'm not sure. I'm gonna put it on the screen, you'll see. But this is white poetry and it is it comes out March 6th, so it's a little bit earlier in the year. And um it sounds pretty awesome. The cover, the cover guys, is beautiful like that's what made me want to like see what the fuck is about i'm like damn that cover is cute but it's about this girl she grew up in harlem and she discovered slam poetry as a way to kind of understand her mother's religion and kind of discover herself it's it's almost like she's like it's coming into her own i don't want to say it's a coming of age novel but it, it sounds like that um she grew up on the streets of harlem and she feels like she's unheard and it's like ever since her body started developing and she started to get cursed she has had to fight a lot so she learned, you know, she's just gonna fight and she's gonna talk later. I like that though. I like that. I like it. Okay, I see you. I see you. But it's almost kind of like she reminds me of, of myself, like reading the synopsis, because uh, she she wants to say a lot, but she doesn't know how to say it. And that's how she ends up like discovering poetry as a way to let it out and a way to vent. And I feel like that when I'm like, you know, I, I feel like that. That's why I love poetry so much, because I, I could just say what I want better in a poem than me you know actually talking to you i don't know why it is but that's just how it is so i feel like i'm gonna i'm gonna just like see myself in her i'm gonna like she's gonna mirror me almost like in that aspect of i could just write it better than i can actually say it out and i just i feel like she's gonna remind me of me you know so we'll see when that comes out and that's definitely gonna be a book i'm gonna like physically buy versus a kindle because the cover is pretty and i want that on my shelf so yeah the next book 
I have seen on um, other people's, you know, 2018 most anticipated releases. I'm drawing blanks, guys. I'm sorry. But I have seen this one a lot of people list. So I think this is going to be well talked about this year on BookTube. And it's called The Rain of the Fallen by Sarah Glenn Marsh. And it comes out January 23rd. So in a couple of days. It'll be out in his YA fantasy. It sounds just really interesting. It's about this girl, Justin. She's a master necromancer. And it's like she works like in the she works like in the kingdom in the cat like in the castle and it's like when one of like the nobles die or like just you know one of the important people die it's her job to go and bring them back to life but it's not that easy it's not like you just get brought back to life you can do whatever you want they have to remain shrouded whatever that means or they turn into like zombies and they call them shades they don't call them zombies but they turn into zombie like creatures that they call shades so Basically, they starts to be like um, a rise in the population of shades, and it's kind of like a war. It's 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 kind of like the apocalypse. It's like a war between them and the shades. That's that's what I'm getting from it. That's what I'm hearing. Uh, I could have totally, you know, missed something here, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So it's almost like a zombie book, but twist it in like a whole different way so we'll see and i think i really might enjoy this like i think i'm gonna like this then people oh my god you guys <laughs> i can't believe i'm even about to put this on the list but i am and it is war storm by victoria avr and i said i can't believe i'm about to put this on the list because i still haven't read king's cage yet I was supposed to read that last month, but like I said, there was a lot of things I can, didn't get to last month, so I can't be mad at myself. But uh, War Storm by Victoria Aviar is the fourth book, I think it's the last book, in the Red, King, Red Queen um, Quartet series, whatever. And it comes out May 15th, which is a little later than usual, because usually her books have been coming out in February. So I'm not mad, though, because I still read King's Cage, so it's giving me time to hurry up and read this and then give this to my fiance, because he's mad at me right now, because I still kept it. Anyway, because I'm like, no, you're going to take too long to read it, and I'm the one that took a whole year and haven't even read it yet. So, um, yeah, and y'all know how crazy I am about Red Queen. I'm just, I'm just... I'm so scared to read this book because I'm scared. I'm scared for a lot of things. I'm scared um, things are going to happen that I don't want to happen. I'm scared I'm going to be pitching this book at the wall. I'm scared that... I'm just scared. Like, I've been on a Red Queen high the first two books. And I feel like this third book is going to take me down. And I don't I don't want to be taken down. So, I'm going to have to face my fears. I mean, I am going to face my fears because I do still want to finish the series. Because we have come this far, been this strong. But... We will see. Then the next book I have is These Rebel Waves by Sarah Raj, which is going to be a part of a new series. I don't know if it's a trilogy or a series, but it's the first book in Stream Raiders, I think it's the name of the series. And all I know is, like, specifically, all I know is that there's magic and there's pirates and there's girl power, and I just feel like I'm ready for that. And I still have to fucking read, um, Frost like night i think is the name of the third book i need to finish that trilogy i don't want to start another series of hers and i haven't finished that one but that doesn't come out until later in the year that doesn't come out until august 7th so i have time i have a good bit of time actually uh, uh, once it gets to august i kind of feel like it's the end of the year so i have a good bit of time the ninth book that i have on my list is the wicked deep by shay earnshaw it comes out March 6th, and this is advertised as Hocus Pocus meets the Salem Witch Trials. Okay, now, tell me that don't sound good. Like, that's what made me, that's what really, really made me re really read what this is about. Because I'm like, okay, I like the Salem Witch Trials. Okay, that was pretty interesting. I love Hocus Pocus, so, okay, we mixing them together. It better be good, okay? It better be good. So, I have high expectations for this book because I'm like, they mixing it, they, how they making it sound, it sounds too good. So it's a, it's about it's set in this cursed town um, called Sparrow, and it's about how these three girls two centuries ago were sentenced to death for witchcraft, and they tied rocks to their ankles and dropped them in the ocean. And now every year, these three sisters they come back and they take the body of like weak-minded girls, and it's about and they like uh, get revenge on people by luring boys to the harbor and pretty much drowning them to death. Well, drowning them to death. If you drown, you are dead. But whatever. You hear? You know what I mean? And, um, 
that's basically what this is about okay so to me like this sounds pretty fucking good then the 10th book on my list is children of blood and bone by tommy Ediemi. And this is also another book that's been, I've been seeing on booktube quite a bit, but this was added to my list before I started seeing it on booktube. I don't know how, but I ended up finding it on Goodreads, and I'm like, oh, the cover looks amazing. And I don't know what the hell it's about, but somehow magic disappeared, and they're trying to get magic back. That's all I know about this, and that's good enough for me, because the, the cover took me, so this is pretty much going to be a cover read. I don't know what to expect out of this. It's on booktube a lot, so I guess a lot of people are you know like very interested in it and um this comes out march 6th and it's why it's the YA fantasy book so yeah then number 11 on my list is ash princess by laura sebastian and it is part of a trilogy this is going to be the first book in a trilogy and this comes out all april yeah april 24th the, and I'm, the only thing that I'm kind of scared of with this book, I'm scared it's going to be similar to Red Queen. That's what I'm scared of. Um, the Ass Princess, I, I only know a little bit about it, but from what I know, like, to sum everything up, um, the girl that they call in the Ass Princess, I want to say her name is Theo. Yeah, I want to say her name is Theo. Um, her city burned down, and her mother, her mother, I think, was called the Queen of flame and fury she was killed before her eyes and so people that is actually like a teaser name like they call mary the little lightning girl that mess with her they call her ash princess and um she gets constant whippings from crate from the crazier i think it's the name i don't know she gets constant whippings and beat him and she but she is not as weak as they think she is she just wants them to think that she is weak so she takes it all and I, I don't know after that. That's all I know. So sorry about this, guys. When I added them to my list, I knew what they were, but it's just too much of me right now. <coughs> it's just too much of me right now. But um, it is on my list. Like I said, I'm just scared it's going to be very similar to Red Queen. That's my fear with this book. That's my, like, one true fear. The cover looks a lot like Red Queen cover, but we're not going to compare covers because there are a lot of covers out there. That looks similar, but we're gonna leave that alone. Let's go move on. The twelfth book I have on my list is called Beautiful Days by Joyce Carol Oates, and it comes out February sixth. And it's a collection of short stories. It's fiction, um, but it's a collection of short stories, and it is, I think, told by thirteen. It's thirteen different stories, you know, about thirteen different people, and it's about how these thirteen different people took their independence in their own hands in a very like rebellious kind of way and y'all know I have been like really craving short stories so I think it's gonna be pretty interesting and like I think this is gonna be drama filled though and I think that's what I've been really wanting is something short but dramatic so I think this is gonna feel that for me I think I'm finally gonna hit it people we're gonna get it then number 13 on my list is the final six by Alexandra Monier I hope that's how you say it. <laughs> but it comes out March 6th, and it is a YA sci-fi novel. Now, I haven't read much sci-fi, not because I'm like, I don't read sci-fi. I just, for some reason, I just I just gravitate more to fantasy. But I want to read more sci-fi. Um, but this, this book ended up on my list because it reminded me a lot of The 100. If you have seen the show The 100, this reminds me a lot of it. It's about these six teenagers that they send to scout a new planet. They send them to Jupiter, actually, because Earth has become unlivable. So they're sending these six teenagers to, um, they're training these six teenagers to go out to Jupiter to see if it's a fit planet for people to live. And this, just hearing that reminded me of the 100 because, you know, the 100, uh, Earth became unlivable. At one point, they moved away, and then they send these 100 teenagers back to Earth to see if it is livable now to kind of settle things, to get it ready for everybody else to come, you know? So it reminded me of the 100. So if you like the 100, I think this might be up your alley. I think this might interest you. Number 14 on my list is The Preacher Woods by Ashley Elston. And this doesn't have a specific publication date, so I'm guessing it's going to be later in the year if it gets published this year at all. Because when I just see it, it says 2018, and it's not really a full synopsis, to me, it means it's kind of if and if and, and if and when it's like it may be at the end of the year but it may be next year i don't know but it sounded interesting and it did get um it's being published by disney hyperion um it's like a dual perspective timeline kind of thing it's about um this prep school boy how his life just like fell to pieces after his father committed this crime that i guess 
can only be, you know, figured out by looking through the past. So I guess we're going to be going into the past, back from present to past to kind of see what happened to actually make his dad commit these crimes. That's all of the synopsis you get though. It's not really a full synopsis. So that's why I say it's an if and when kind of thing. If it's published, it will be at the end of the year or it might be next year. We don't know. Then the last two books I did steal from other people ones because they sounded so fucking good. Number 15 is Brightly Burned by Alexa Donnie. Whatever. It comes out May 1st. And this took me. This is a sci-fi retelling of Jane Eyre. Okay, people? This is Jane Eyre on fucking spaceships. And if you, like, have heard, have been on my channel, listen to me. Jane Eyre is, like, I read Jane Eyre. I think that was year before last for the first time. I love Jane Eyre. I didn't think I was going to like it. I listened to it on audiobook. It was fucking amazing. It's one of my favorite classics. If anybody asks about classics, this is usually a book I recommend between this and Animal Farm. Oh my fucking god, I was like, yeah, I gotta I gotta read this. Jane Eyre in space, bitch. Yes, I have to read this. So this is on my list. That's all I have to say about it. I don't I didn't even need a whole synopsis. Jane Eyre retelling in space. Jane Eyre on spaceships. That's what's perfect for me. Then number 16 is another one I didn't need, didn't need a whole fucking um synopsis for. All I needed was what they were comparing it to. Okay. It's called the Undead Girl Gang by Lily Anderson. I'm pretty sure you've heard it. Just about everybody has talked about this, has added this on their list of things to read this year. And it comes out May 8th. Now, this is advertised, okay, as Veronica Mars meets the craft. Y'all know I love the fucking craft, okay? Y'all know I'm like, I love books with Wiccans and about witchcraft and stuff. I love books like that, okay? With the magic shit. I love it. So, if this is another book I have high expectations for. I don't care what it is, but if you compare it to the craft, it better be lit, okay? It better be, it better blow my mind, okay? It better just be, it just better take me away when I read this. It just, it better take me away. From what I understand, it's like these, I don't know how many girls it is, they come back to life. They were dead, and now they come back to life, and they go to undead. She bring, no, she bring these three girls, I think, back to life. She's alive, and I think she accidentally brings like three or four girls back to life or whatever. But, um, I, that's all I can tell you. I'm not gonna fuck it up with my fucked up synopsis. You guys can read it by yourself. But when you compare anything to the craft, sus. It better deliver. Because I promise y'all, this book is not five stars to me. I feel like I'm going to be so harsh on it. Because you're comparing it to the craft. And that is like the holy grail. I'm just like... It it better be good. It better be, one, it better be on 100. That's all I know. It better be. Um, so people, that is all I have for you today for my most exciting um, releases of 2018. Since I had to be different and change the name. Hopefully it wasn't too long. I don't think it was. I don't think I rambled on too much. I just really tried to get through it because Kobe has to go to the doctor and get her one year round of shots. Oh you guys, I made it through my first year of mommyhood. My, um, Claire turned one on the 22nd of December. So I made it through my first year. And um, it went by really fast. I think I'm going to do a video on that. Like how I made it through my first year. Like my trials and tribulations. But whatever, I'm official now, y'all. Uh, <laughs> thank you guys for watching my video. Um, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I would like to know if there are any books that you guys are particularly excited for this year coming up. Or any of the books that I saw on my list that you guys are now excited for. We can talk about it in the comments. Um, yeah, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time. Bye. You know I try, but I don't do too well with a pie.